Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through the books and recent pickups plus a few new publications that have come my way through September and early October 2022. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's get to it. OK, then, so we'll start off with a few pelicans. Now, I've been quite lucky this month. Uh, a a penguin specialist dealer who I have been buying from for best part of 20 years in fact um, he did a specialist catalogue on vintage pelican books and I was able to get quite a few that I needed um, so these pelicans that you see here today are all ones that I never owned in my main collection originally and I filled stacks of gaps I reckon about 20 or so gaps in my vintage pelican collection so I only collect pelicans up to number 600 after number 600 they're a little bit spotty but it's predominantly the earlier ones that I really like although the later ones sort of the, the 60s ones do have their own sort of particular charm you know so I don't expect them to need loads of work but um like this one there's a bit of a remnant of an old 25 pence or something in there so there's a little bit of uh, uh rubbing out to do but it's been a uh, quite a busy time really i've had um two sort of big collections in one was a um a big wartime fiction collection so not wartime as in published in the 40s but um from late 50s upwards um of sort of war related fiction and non-fiction that came in, in one huge huge collection and um i've unboxed and cleaned that one and put like a, a double episode as it were up on my other channel my sort of dedicated asmr sort of cleaning channel um and there's some really really great stuff in there lots and lots of vintage paperbacks um it deserved its own um video in all honesty rather than um doing it as as part of this one like my monthly pickups which is more bits and bobs that have come my way in the last sort of month or so so ah uh, yeah I remember this one first came out as a penguin special which was then reprinted then reprinted with a postscript as a pelican and that's that pelican there this one I see has got a little bit of like staining on there so we will give these um a bit of a polish at the end and a brush in the usual manner um, just to get them as clean as possible um, yeah so that was the first sort of big collection and it was fantastic there was a huge range of corgis panthers all sorts of publishers in there um, and lots and lots of stuff that I didn't have um, as far as I can see so far I've only pulled just a couple of doubles out of it although there definitely will be more um, you may have seen on the channel we recently did a uh, a sales video and uh, lots of stuff has sold as you would expect uh, you know another hundred or so books have gone out the door uh, there's still lots left so if you um, haven't had a chance to look at that video yet uh, please do but I will be doing another one probably early January and I'm gonna have quite a bit more doubles from recent sort of acquis acquisitions to uh, to go through with you um, now that's all the pelicans that have come to hand now I also bought a little run of James Bond books probably about a dozen or so Flemings and um, on the whole they were in particularly nice condition um, and I only really bought them for some later um, Triad Grenada editions which I know I haven't got but like I always do um, I'll compare these copies with the ones that are already in my collection and if there's any sort of significant difference um, or it's the first time that this cover was used or things like that uh, then I will sort of keep it in my uh, my James Bond variations folder because I've got um, an awful lot of them now and I'm also putting together a really nice reading set of the of the series in vintage pans so uh, I'm sure I've had this one a few times but when you buy job lots, particularly the bomb books, you're bound to get some doubles. This is actually a second printing, so I think the first of Thunderball in pan was the same cover with the, the bullet holes, so that'll probably be a double that one. Um, these were the reason I was picking that, because there's a few of these in there, and I've only got one or two. This is published by Triad Granada, and these are probably will be my cut-off series. I won't be collecting the bomb books much past this, I wouldn't have thought. And uh, I really like these sort of jackets with the woman sat on the massive gun prop there. Very much of their time, aren't they? 
Here's another pan one, which I think is one I need, but I'm not going to keep it because the spine is a bit faded. There's a little bit of wear on the back there. Um, I might keep it as a filler if, it, if I just haven't, don't have it at all. But my suspicion is I have actually already got this one. But if I haven't, yeah, he's a little bit too far gone. I want a really, really nice one for these reprints, one with a nice spine. But it will do as um, maybe a reading copy. And uh, the last Bond one for now is uh, another, yet another copy of OHMSS. Now I've got the first, second, third and fourth, so I've already got this one. So this one will also be going into my um, doubles stack, but it's a really, really nice copy. So it may end up in my reading set. We'll just have to see. Do a few more pelicans now. I said we've got a fair few to get through. And that one's got like a, a square sticker right on the front. How unusual. Hmm. I'm not gonna tease that off because it almost feels like it's part of the cover. A uh, bit of a weird one. I was very pleased to get this. Some might say it was Penguin's first ever venture into science fiction. This one, Last and First Men. And it's Pelican number three, the A3. And it's in a wrapper. So, not the best of copies, but I mean, it's considering its age, what, 1937, I believe. 37, yeah. I'm not going to um, complain about it at all. And it's one I've been after for ages, so. The good thing about these pelicans that I got was that they were all reasonably priced. So um, between, say, two and three pounds fifty, absolute maximum. So that would have been the, one of the slightly more expensive ones at about three fifty, but worth it for such an early one. This is one that was just on my list as one to upgrade, and you can see why because when it was printed, it was printed during um, wartime conditions, and uh, the paper is very, very thin. So my copies virtually fall into bits so this was a really nice to get a decent upgrade on this one so that was cool these i think are harder to get than they may realize this is cinema from 1950 loads of stills in here really really nice and once again these were only a couple of pounds each the ones that i was missing and um I thought that was a really great price for these books, which generally sell for a bit more than that. So I think I did okay in that regard. The last Pelican, Organization Man. Which, in all honesty, I thought I had. Maybe I've got one that's similar. What was that? Looks like a little insertion. Yeah, someone's used like an old receipt as a bookmark. And that one's got a price inside, a previous owner's name. But it looks like it is in pencil. Yeah, so we'll we'll get this one rubbed out right now, I think. lovely I'm not quite sure what that said it just looks like an old bit of receipt doesn't it now um, I did also have a very small order from Drew the Penguin chap and it included two under 1000 titles that I needed the first one was this one it was a hundred crossword puzzles um, now I think pretty much all the puzzles have been completed pretty much, as you can see. They've been done in pencil, but in all honesty, I'm not gonna go through and rub all the uh, all the clues out and all the answers out because it's, it's just it's just too much where I just don't want to do it. Um, crossword books, I, you know, I don't mind doing crossword puzzles uh, now and again, but it's not something I'm mad about. And um, these are really just sort of in the collection just to, to fill the number. I mean, there is really no other reason. Um, there are some particularly difficult pre-war or and wartime penguin crossword books. And thankfully I do only need the one of those now and then I'll have it complete. I'm also a crossword collector. 
a crossword book collector, a specialist in it, um, has found another one that I need next to this one. So I need one crossword book from sort of wartime period and one from the later 50s period. And then that's all the uh, Penguin crossword books done, all the puzzle books, in fact, which will be quite an achievement in actual fact. So that was one of the ones off the first thousand that I need. And here's the other one. So it was actually quite a rare crime one. So um, I had to put in like a sealed bid on this one. So um, I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for it, but suffice to say, um, it was a pretty penny, should we say. But I know it is super, super rare. It's incredibly rare in first edition, which this is June 1943. Many, many people are looking for this particular one. It's, it's just a tough, tough crime title to get um so i was uh, very pleased to get it so thanks for that drew um so that's two off the list plus another one on the way so i'm now just down to six first penguin editions to have the full set of the first 1000 in first penguin edition so that's that'd be fantastic if i could ever um lick that collection um an odd puff in here 157 which is uh noel stratfield she's the author of ballet shoes is probably her most famous one this is the painted garden classic uh, wraparound cover typical of a lot of the um puffins of this time quite thick for a puffin actually very very nice and making quite a bit of headway on the puffins between 100 and 200 um so i'm really uh yeah i'm not complete yet i'm not not there and i'd like to get the first about 330 340 is my target for puffin storybooks but certainly the second hundred i'm well on my way there now to uh to being fairly close to uh having a full run um so i think we'll stop there and we'll give these books a bit of a gentle brush off along the top as i said because on the whole they've come from dealers i don't expect them to be in a terrible state anyway in all honesty but we we'll just use this soft brush here. Usually it's the top edges that need the most brushing. which are going to need polishing and I'm not. There's a few oldies in here. Bolts coming off that white shooter butler. going to end up in a bag. I don't put many paperbacks in bags nowadays um, simply because I like to get them out and look at them and what have you. Um, but even so, that one's quite fragile and I don't want it to uh, accidentally get chipped or anything like that. So uh, it's going to need to go into a bag. Okay. 
lovely okay so with all these books what i'm going to do the ones that i can polish the the jackets to i.e the more modern books i'm going to put in one part and the ones which i can't and there won't be many that i can't but there'll be some are going to put in a separate pile again so these are all going to be okay to have a polish obviously that one isn't and neither is that or that or that um that puffin is also not polishable but those are okay that one isn't so it's basically the later ones which are going to be good to go yeah there we are right so let's put these to one side and get the next lot out okay carrying on here we got an odd penguin handbook which is a series i'm slowly but surely putting a fairly fairly nice run together um certainly it doesn't warrant a video yet of the ones that i've got but i'm fairly close to having maybe half of them so <laughs> um, when i get a, a few more under my belt um, i'm certainly going to do a video because it's very much a series that's um uh, come of age of late this is quite a rare uh, pelican you know uh, this one on hitler a study in tyranny now see it's got a little bit of spine wear at the top so i'm going to glue that back down in a sec huge book here yeah 850 pages i did read a fantastic biography of hitler um a few years ago i cannot for the life of me remember who it was by but it was it was really really good really really good great historian um i think he'd written a couple of books on hitler before and he this was like an an edition with both of them together and some new material as well cannot for the life of me remember so if i when i get this edited i'll uh, pop a little picture in of it but that you know if you're ever going to read a book on hitler really that was the one to read and uh, certainly i i have no desire to read any more on hitler there we are so that had obviously a little bit of uh got chipped at the top of the spine there so that should hopefully keep it in place. Also, you can see the spine has sort of yellowed a little bit and aged, and that's probably nicotine. Um, so when we get to polish that one, um, the glue will be dry by then. Uh, we'll make a little note of that and see if we can actually get any of the, uh, the staining off it. The Orthodox Church here. So, um, yeah, so apart from the big military collection, which was fantastic, um, I also picked up literally like the next week a really nice science fiction collection. So that run has already been cleaned and that video is up on the channel um, as we speak. And the main highlight of that collection was just how great the condition was. I mean, they really were superb. Um, they ranged from about 1968 up to about 1974. And then there's a couple of odd ones up until about 1980. But it really, really was one of the best single and greatest condition collections I've had in a long, long time. And probably my best single collection pickup this year. But two very, very good ones within the space of just a couple of weeks, which was fantastic. But during those weeks, I unfortunately got COVID. And I'm still not quite over it. I'm still a little bit croaky in the voice department. But um, I'm getting better every every day getting a little bit better so it is what it is i managed to avoid it for three years and i've been fully vaccinated but um that doesn't that's not always enough you know so uh there we go it was just my turn to get it uh, okay so at the top of the spine here you'll probably spot this but you can see it's come away again so i want to put some splurge of of glue down there this will probably take a couple of bits and i'm filming this on a tuesday and the weather is absolutely awful so i'm out in the studio as usual but if you do hear the odd drip drop of rain i'm very dry in here you'll be pleased to hear it's dry as a bone in here there we are i'm just going to squish that off with my thumb lovely archaic egypt i love books on old egypt um i will eventually 
get out there as a tourist and, and go through some of the um, the touristy antiquity sites because uh, I've always been sort of fascinated by it, but um, never really got around to getting out there. Yeah, so had the COVID, which set me back a little bit, but thankfully I was so far ahead on my videos that I didn't really, the channel didn't really get, get impacted much by it. Um, although some of the videos I do sound a bit croaky. Um, but I did have Matt from Matt's Book Nook, one of my Patreon supporters for a long time, but he's launched his own channel now and he stepped up and recorded a really nice sort of uh, introduction to his channel and he did some uh, book cleaning and he talked about Andre Norton which was fantastic um, and um, you know if you've not been over to Matt's channel please do check it out you know um, and then my friend um, uh, Steve the Outlaw Bookseller he's agreed to do a spot uh, like a dedicated video where he's going to be looking at some classic glance SF Masterworks, which I think will be fantastic. Really, really great video. And that one's going to be coming out um, late November, early December. So look out for that as well. This is the uh, movie. T is it the movie tied to Goldfinger? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, so not the first. That's the 12th printing. Very nice, nice condition copy of it. This one I definitely didn't have. This is the Triad. Granada for Octopussy. Once again, really from the time, I guess it's the late 1970s. Oh, look at that. Someone's put an Octopussy sticker inside from, that would have been from the movie. Uh, reprinted 82. Well, there you go. It says the model of the automatic nine millimeter pistol designed and built by David Collins and Floris van der Broek. I do believe that the golden gun here, the pistol has turned up recently. And so someone's actually got it in their collection, if you can believe it. <laughs> Very dusty that one. So that will look good cleaned up. Here's another one in that range. You only live twice and you can see the attraction. I think they're really, really great fun. I can remember these ones on the shelf. I can't remember seeing any of the old pan ones, uh, not when they were new, because I'm just, too young of course for that um, but I do remember seeing these ones around when I was a kid and Dr. No they're all going to benefit from a nice polish in a minute Dr. No here these are nice additions as well so I noted recently that the Ian Fleming Foundation have taken the rights back for James Bond now so they're no longer going to be published by Penguin anymore which is a shame um, and they're going to be doing their own editions of them. This is the uh, fairly standard pan edition. Really nice jacket on that one. This is the fifth so I'm sure I've got oh the sixth printing right I'm sure I've got this edition with this price on but I will of course double check. I'm trying to get all the different sort of variations of the Bond books. And I think this might be the last Bond book today, which is the Granada Triad of Live and Let Die. Great, great jacket again on this one. Lovely. Excellent. I think they're all really, really cool, those. And just a couple more um, pelicans here. Stagnant Society and the Waste Makers. Cool. Right, let's sort these ones out. So a few months back, I was contacted by a chap called Owen Churchill. Now, Owen would have been tasked with um, recreating an original 1950s penguin bookcase. And just this week, as I was filming this video, he actually got in touch to say that he'd finished it. And uh, here are the results. So what you see on the screen here now is his replica original penguin bookcase. And uh, how incredible is this? It really, really is great. So he does say um, you might notice that he's made a couple of small alterations to the original design, uh, like making the feet out of two pieces of wood rather than one and fixing them with two screws instead of one plus the bracket underneath. Um, I did ask if he was sort of doing this professionally and was he going to be selling them online. Um, but he did say that this was a one-off commission. Um, he's a hand tool woodworker by trade and he said these things take a long time to make so it wouldn't be possible to do in big batches. Um, however, um, I will um, put a link to 
Owen's Instagram page in the description down below. And if you do want to contact him, well, that's the way to do it. But I just thought you'd like to see this incredible, beautiful penguin bookcase. So give these a little brush. So Steve and I, see the Outlaw Books there that is, went up to Hay and Y. It was a couple of months ago now, uh, but we are planning to meet up again in November. So and we're going to be on location and hopefully visiting another long time paperback book dealer. And we're going to sort of film his lair. So I'm going to be very, very much looking forward to that. He's not a million miles from where I live and uh, it should be, should be really cool. So look out for that one in November. Also had some fantastic books sent my way this month, of which I've got a few to show you today. Sort of recent acquisitions, books you might want to put on your Christmas list. So it's been all in all a pretty decent month. And uh, I've got lots and lots to sort out. Got a toy fair coming up Sunday week, which is at West Point. This will be the last one of the year. That's usually a very, very good one because it's the, like the Christmas show. People do uh, tend to bring along some really great stuff. Lots of dust coming off here. So yeah, quite a bit to look forward to. Almost taste the dust in the air at the moment. And let this settle a minute. <sighs> so sort these out into uh, polishable and not polishable. In actual fact, I think every single one of these is going to be able to be polished because they've all got nice glossy covers which means that we can polish them without fear of uh, damaging them and some of them look like that it's got a really I don't know if you can see it but it's very very mottled and a little got a little bit of aging and that's going to come up absolutely pristine once it's had the treatment so all of that in actual fact all of those books can be uh, given the old Mr Sheen treatment which is good news because they're all going to come up very, very nice, I reckon. Right. So, we got a few, I uh, picked up another little lot of books. Now, this one I picked up, um, I've been after a copy for ages, and it was literally just to read. It's not a reprint, it's not um, It's not first edition, rather, it's just a reprint, but I wanted to just um, give it a read, because I remember being absolutely scared, rigid of this, when I was a youngster, it was really, and it's based on a true story, sort of about a, a UFO, I guess, not an infestation, a UFO visitation at this old sort of farmhouse, which is still standing. It's up in Wales. And apparently this is all based on a true story. However, the book was a big seller. In fact, that's a third printing of it. And it did go on and have two more sequels. So I'm not sure how relevant the sequels are. They're not by the original author, but um, I'm going to read this one again and I'm going to do like almost like a dedicated review of it because it absolutely scared the willies out of me. Just letting you know. <laughs> now, um, I've got a couple of odd um, uh, pan books. This was actually got some uh, dirt on it. So this is once again going to benefit from a really decent polish. But it's a scarce little title, this one. Um, it's, it is a first, but it's got that... Um, ink running through it on the first few pages, but it's rare. Uh, Domain of Devils, so uh, I'm, I'm pleased to get it. Um, a couple in that sort of realm here now. Dark World of Witches, another another scarce one. I think this one might be a reprint. Let's just have a look. But it doesn't matter because either any edition of this is actually quite sought after. Yeah, this is actually the second from 1965. But quite a quite a scarce one that. I was trying to see Roger Harris was the cover artist. But quite nice to get. 
This turned up in the same lot and it was um, a pedigree books witchcraft, a mirror of witchcraft. Christina Hole. That's got a tiny bit of glue at the bottom of the spine, but this sort of a subject is highly, highly collectible. And uh, when I see them, I do tend to pick them up because they just, they generally just don't turn up very often, you know? So let's grab this one here, which is coming up in a minute. And I just want to get some glue in there, you see, so. Just sort of in that little bit there. Delicately does it. There we are. Squidge it in. Ah, oh, there we go. Just wipe the excess glue away. That'll stop that one getting any worse. And I have actually got another one from the same publisher, which is also where, uh, rare, Satanism and Witchcraft. This one's got, once again, at the bottom of the spine, it's been quite, quite damaged. Same sort of era. I haven't got many pedigree books. This one's 1959. Once again, almost in exactly the same spot. Bottom of the spine there, except this is a bit more serious. So I'm going to need a, a little bit more work on this one. Nothing we can't handle though, because we have the technology. Want to make sure the entire area is covered. Good thing is the bit that's come up is not missing. That's the worst bit. If it was missing, that would be terrible. But the fact that it's actually still there and it's just uh, come away is good. Is actually good news, you know. There we are. So yeah, a little tip: if you're out and about and you see books on sort of witchcraft, Satanism, um, black magic, drugs, the occult. Those sorts of subjects are highly, highly collectible. And uh, if you see them, pick them up because they do tend to uh, go for good money. That little batch of books, they cost me about a tenner. But um, individually, I could probably get well, certainly the two pedigree ones, uh, probably a tenner each on their own. Um, so, you know, that's just an example. Well, look, since this one's here, um, it's one of the few hardbacks I've got today. And I have shown one of these before. So this is the Hodder and Stoughton Library. And um, oh yeah, that, guess that that is, they've used this as a bookmark, but that's actually the back of a penguin. And it's a wartime penguin as well, you feel by the cover. It's probably that last orange one that I need. <laughs> I had to laugh when I, when I saw that. Um, but yeah, this library is actually really good. So I don't particularly want to be paying much more than about eight to ten pounds for any of these and i'm not fussed about getting them in first edition but they're huge omnibuses sort of the best of an author so this particular one um is a reprint from may 37 but it first came out in july 29 and uh, it's like a compilation of the very best of this particular author i think they're really good they very much remind me of the century of series by Hutchinson that I was collecting. But as I said, these are by Hodder and Stoughton, and I reckon there's about 20 in the series to collect. Um, I have got a work in progress bibliography on the go of these. Um, and when I've got the set licked, as best of, you know, to the best of my knowledge, I will of course do a dedicated video, but I think they're really nice. They're just about the right size. I, I like the cloth. This one, in all honesty, is a tiny bit worse condition than I would like. I have got another one, which is by O. Henry, and it's uh, the first of two that they did by him of his short stories. And uh, that one's in a really um, nice wrapper. So it's protected the boards. So the boards are a bit cleaner. This one was borderline, but it was dirt cheap. It was about like four quid, including postage. It was just, it was just too good to turn down basically. 
Right, last little pile of paperbacks, and it appears to be all pelicans, but some interesting ones all the same. So we'll get these done and out of the way, and we'll get this last little load of paperbacks cleaned. This is one on the chamber music. <laughs> Recorded jazz. This is another one which I believe is quite scarce, just because of the subject matter. It's probably why I haven't got it. But the backbone of my Pelican collection actually all came from one guy who I used to work with and he had a great, great collection of it and, um, and a, a smallish collection of penguins, but mainly Pelicans. Um, and he didn't have many of the sort of the music related ones. He was more into natural history and uh, that sort of thing. And I just don't think like the film one and, and the music ones were just on his radar he just kept skipping them over which is a shame because he had such an incredible collection um, but thankfully I was able to give it a good home about I don't know 10 years ago maybe a bit longer than that here is another one of those music from 1952 As I said these all came from one dealer pretty much and uh, a very very good price yeah, it worked out I don't know on average about two two pounds each 250 and when you last down to the last handful I mean it my pelican list now I mean I couldn't tell you exactly what I now need under 600 but it's not bad it's not bad at all now still not at the stage where I'm gonna pick them off one by one off eBay. That's still a very expensive way to do it. Um, but look at this, get this. This is Cinema 52, 1952. Another one with a big, huge photo insert, which I guess makes these quite sought after, particularly if you're a cinema fan, a film fan. And there are lots of students of the old movies. I think this one was possibly a special as well, you know. Yeah, it was the first published as a Penguin Special 942, reprinted in the Pelican 1956. I recognise the title. Another music one, Musical Instruments Through the Ages. Nice, nice bold cover that, not your typical Pelican. I'm assuming it's a first printing, even though it looks a little bit out of place. Yeah, first 1961, eight and six. That was expensive, wasn't it? Wow. Magnetism. Nineteen sixty-three, and the last pelican I can see is the Hidden Persuaders, Vance Packard. Lovely. Right, so let's give these all a brush. Put them in a few convenient stacks.
few dirty books here that are going to benefit from a polish, that's for absolutely certain. better than they did. <sighs> Lovely. Right, so I'm going to sort through these now and see which ones can be polished and which ones I can. Those two will be polishable, but I need to tread with uh, care. The two pans are all right. These later pelicans are okay. Those ones are not because they like paper covers that 60s one's okay and these ones are not they're more paper covers so little parlor ones which are going to be as is and then those ones we can do now let give this hardback a uh, a dust as well now it's not in too bad condition this hardback but Generally, with a hardback, it's um, it's in there. That's where it collects the dust, and that'd be hard for my other brush to get in. So I use the toothbrush for that nowadays, just to get the top of the spine like that. And the same again down the bottom, like that. You can almost see the line. Where I've, <laughs> where I've wiped, and then for the rest of it, we will use the uh, the big brush. I mean, it wasn't too bad by the look of it. In all honesty, I'm also going to give the actual boards a rub because these have got these are cloth boards. So it's sort of, they do pick up dust. Yeah, it's a shame it has got some spotting and stuff and it does sadly detract from what would be um, a nice book, but um, I took a chance because in the, I think it was off eBay I got this, they only showed the front cover like that and they said it was a nice complete copy, which in all honesty, it really is. It's just um, outside of the front cover, you can see the spotting on the front and, and more on the back. So oh well, it is what it is, but it was fairly cheap. So I'm not gonna complain too much. So the next book I've got is this one, which is A Life of Philip K. Dick. Now this was sent to me uh, by one of my uh, viewers, uh, Tris Thompson. He's a good friend of mine and uh, he, knows of my interest in Philip K. Dick, but I don't really know a lot about the author. So he sent me this one. They said, you've got to give this a try. So um, that is what I'm going to do. So it looks really, really interesting. And a uh, real sort of history of every single book, quite nicely illustrated as well. I think it's going to be a good one. I really, really do. So thank you very much for that, Tris. And uh, I'll let you know in a future video what I thought of that one, but it does look great. So thanks for that. Um, another old penguin, uh, one which I hadn't, because uh, of its size, I hadn't included with the other one. So it's part of the Things We See series. Um, there's not many of these, and I think uh, I just need maybe three or four for the set now. Quite an interesting sort of look. I think they, they come in different cover, sort of covers as well. This one's got what they call the eye cover, but it's also got the dust wrapper. And uh, they do also exist in hardback, I believe, as well. At least some of them do. Uh, but that is quite a nice one. I believe that was also from uh, Drew. Um, the ones that I've actually got came from a boot, a boot sale <laughs> years ago. So it's not a series that I've tried to collect, but I'm glad to have the ones that, I've actually, that I do actually own. Because it's quite interesting. It's one of those sort of offshoot series, which... Um, you know, Penguin will produce lots of these sorts of things. And there's one just uh, 
looking at uh, ships. Now, um, I've recently reviewed this one on the channel. It's absolutely amazing. Ray guns and rocket ships. So I've done a dedicated review of this going right through the book. But just to give you another tease, but the video is already up on the channel. Um, as you can see, it is incredible. It is fantastic. What a book this one is. So I'll once again put a link to it so you can buy one off Amazon yourself. Um, it's by Ryan Hughes and it's just superb. A history, in a way, of uh, the early years of British um, science fiction publishing, paperback publishing, and in fact a bit of hardback publishing as well, as you can see. It is incredible. Really, really, really great. Book of the year for me, this one. Just superb. So, Ray Guns and Rocket Ships. It's one to look out for. And as I said, put a link in the description down below because it's great. It's just been published, so it's uh, hot off the presses. Um, now, I've got this one as well. Now, this may take a bit more work, so let's pop these other books to one side a moment. This is a copy of Paperbacks in Print. Now, this is a magazine, well, not a magazine, it's a, a, a book which came out annually. This is Winter 67, so I don't know if there's any others for 67. I've only got one other one in my collection. I think it's from about 1964. So it's all the books in the UK from all British publishers that were in paperback at that point. Um, so 28,000 titles in print. And uh, most of the big publishers sort of advertised in it. And it was, in a way, a bit of a, a, bit of a Bible. So let's just swap the camera around a moment. There we are. Hopefully that's a bit better. Now, because of the nature of this book, it's almost like a phone directory. So the pages are super, super thin and they get um, they get worn very, very easily. So generally speaking, these um, th these catalogues don't turn up in very nice condition. Um, this one isn't bad. I've seen worse and I've turned down worse, but it's sort of going to give you a little idea of what it's like. This has got like a classified index. But throughout it will be really nice period adverts from various sort of paperback publishers. And that's what I like. There's a penguin one there. Some of them advertise multiple times in each edition. This has got, it looks like it's got a few loose pages coming out, which have come away. So let's go ahead. Yeah, so this one is suffering a bit of damage here. So it's not the end of the world, but I would prefer it if the pages weren't sort of sticking out as it were so I'm just going to sort of fold them in like so because this has taken a bit of a bit of damage now my friend Tim who runs the pan collectors website he's got pretty much a full set of these and he's been through it meticulously and um, he's worked out all the pan books that were published so um, as a source of reference, it really is sort of fantastic, really. Um, obviously, by this time, there's even more paperbacks being listed. But they are quite scarce because they're only really issued to the book trade and the printing trade. So there's not exactly lots and lots of copies of these around in existence anymore. But I wanted to show you it because, as I said, it is, it is rare, these. And... Uh, they don't turn up very often. That's only the second one I've ever been able to track down. And when they turn up, they're generally quite cheap. They're like a fiver or something, which is, I think, what I paid for that one. Um, Spine-wise, well, yeah, it has got a little bit of spine wear, which I'm going to just put a bit of glue on to stop it getting any worse. But yeah, they're not something that you come across very often. I mean, you just don't see them around. But it's got everything listed at that point that was in print which is as you can imagine back then considerable there we are that looks pretty good so there's a couple of entries in the men's adventure genre that came my way this month uh, first one was this fantastic hardback looking at the original cover artwork of george gross so it's george gross covered by robert dice and wyatt doyle great great book here looking at his uh, history of his career as you can see, great, great artist here. Really beautiful hardback. This one's also available in paperback as well. And uh, once again, I've done a dedicated review of this one on the channel. 
and also literally just out as hot off the press as it were is uh the latest issue of men's adventure quarterly this is issue six this is on heist it's called the heist issue um and it's looking at heist uh, stories within the men's adventure magazines but there's also articles on heist movies in fact one that i wrote myself heist films and books um so have a little look through this one as well great great stuff little feature on angie dickinson which is fantastic as well this is a great great issue and uh, it comes recommended if you've not read any of the uh men's adventure quarterly magazines they're good value for money and you can see there's virtually like a book there's so much in here and there's my uh little piece there i think you're going to really really enjoy it so uh Pick yourself up a copy of the Men's Adventure Quarterly. Right then. So last step of the process then is we're going to need to give um, some of these books a bit of a polish. So let's do that next. OK, then. So we'll make a careful start on doing some uh, cleaning. Now find a clean bit of cloth. So that corner looks absolutely fine to me. So at this point, we're about half, more than halfway through the video now. But I'd like to uh, just thank my... Patreon supporters and channel members. They really do make a difference and uh, they always get to see these pickup videos early. Um, I try and give them at least one and possibly two videos a week before they go live on the main channel. And of course they get that credit on the screen in all my videos. So thank you very much guys and girls. Now, the only other thing to sort of go over, which I haven't mentioned yet, is I'm going to be launching, um, and it will be launched by the time you read this, um, merchandise. So um, I've only got my sort of channel logo uploaded to the website at the moment, um, but I have got some other designs on their way, which are going to be uh, sort of book related um, and some other stuff as well. I just have to tread slightly carefully because I don't want to you know, break any sort of copyright laws in that. Um, I can't just put up a load of really cool vintage paperbacks, so that would make quite a good one. And I think you'd be struggling to find out who actually owned the rights to something like that. Um, so I think we probably could come up with a few goodies. Um, so leave that with me, but um, the website that hosts them now, and you can get all sorts of stuff like key rings and phone cases and stickers and things like that even just a sticker for like a pound is going to really help the channel out so if you want something a bit fun then uh, then do please check it out it's called t public is the website and they're often often having sales look at that off those two books <laughs> they're i knew they were bad nick uh or dirty rather but um yeah they're often having sales and uh if you can afford to buy a little bit of memorabilia or merchandise then it will of course be helping the channel out because i get a, a commission off each sale so and i've got some stuff to show you so in that video i actually have already got a t-shirt and i've got a couple of stickers and what have you so and i shall show you those in due course so i knew those two were going to be a little bit um more work so i did them at the start there and they did not um, disappoint they've come up really really nicely particularly that one I very much like that um, but these pelicans um, once again they didn't need a lot but a couple of them were just slightly did slightly and I'm just going to keep my eyes peeled for the handful that were just going to need a little bit more than usual um, cleaning wise but something like that that's really nice it's come up nice and white it's uh, that's absolutely fine and I think, yeah, this is one which had a few bits on the front. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to pick it up on video, but believe me, when the books are here right in front of you, you can sort of see little imperfections and stuff in the light.
dirty, this one. Yeah, that ray guns and rocket ships look really, really terrific. Um, I actually filmed the review of it this morning, and uh, it's an incredible book. I mean, it really, really is. And uh, if you've not watched that video yet, I do urge you to have a look because I think you'll be absolutely gobsmacked at the work that's gone into it. It just is a design triumph. It's incredible, absolutely incredible. It's a sort of dream book for someone like me, and I'm sure if you're into Looking at old vintage paperbacks, you'll get a lot out of it as well. It's definitely one to put on your uh, on your Christmas list. Some of these were decidedly dirtier than they actually looked. <laughs> well, that's okay. We have the technology and uh, the means to get these looking as good as possible. Books with uh, black covers always tend to really benefit from a, a shine. They tend to show up dust and stuff like that a little bit more regularly than some other colors. First of these bomb books.
pretty nice copy of this one. been in a very smoky environment. Move the mat around a little bit here, the cloth rather. of a smoky spine. Lovely, well that's the first half done. I've got another pile similar sort of size to get through. But I think they're looking very, very nice now. Ready to uh, go into the uh, the main collection once they've been gone through. They all of course need cataloging, so that's gonna take a bit of time. But that's the fun part. And then actually adding them into the collection is uh, always great fun. So here's pile number two. So here we are, starting on pile number two here. And uh, this one, as I said, it was only a reading copy, but uh, I'm looking forward to giving it a go again after all these years. <laughs> I've been trying to revisit some of my old sort of childhood favourites, and uh, so far it's been brilliant fun. I've been really enjoying it. I think that bit of cloth has really just about had it. I don't even want to use it anymore, so I'm gonna refold it and get a nice, nice clean bit here. Before this goes in the wash, it's had a few few busy sessions lately with all the books that have been coming in. Been really, really lucky with uh hauls of late, so uh, I doubt I'll have any now till next year, but <laughs> you never know what's around the corner and this is one of the ones that had that sort of staining on the front and I'm pleased to see it's coming up lovely I thought it probably would it looked like someone had splashed some coffee on the front or something you know so that's good news to the reflection yeah that's okay
so not a bad mix this time around in all honesty quite pleased with what we picked up but I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time in the old collection with everything that's come my way this last month and uh, although I filed a little bit of it away there's still loads to do so um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, film another shunting session where I uh, go through the collections and uh, slip in all the new ones and compare duplicate copies and stuff like that so uh, I'll do one of those this week as well I think as I get everything packed away look at the nicotine that's come off that one <laughs> that's just crazy wow I said you find it sometimes the books have been in a smoky environment you can take some of it off but you'll never get rid of it all look at that that is just from smoke yeah, it's a little bit lighter than what it was i suppose awful isn't it god dear oh dear let's try a different bit of clean cloth <laughs> So these penguin handbooks don't turn up very often. It's not like they're super collectible, but if you were trying to get a collection together, it's difficult. It really is. Um, I've got a lot of the early ones, um, but I haven't got many of the sort of the 60s ones. They're much, much harder to find, but I've got a few now. And this was another one I suspect had quite a bit of cigarette staining on from back in the day. Quite a bit, considering that was virtually clean, that bit of cloth. Not that I've got anything against smokers or anything. Um, it's not really good for your, your health, but I used to smoke myself when I was growing up. But I haven't smoked for a long time now. I just don't think my body could handle it. <laughs> But lots of my friends still swag at work and that, lots of them. Last little pile here. So I hope you've enjoyed looking through these this time around. Um, it seems longer than a month since I last did one of these, but it hasn't been really. Um, it's just been a really sort of busy month, I think, more than anything. Um, and some good stuff has come my way, so I'm very pleased with what I've picked up. Not least of which, getting three out of the nine Penguin books that I needed, all within the space of a month. I mean, that's uh, that's really quite an achievement. So I'm very, very pleased about that since it had got down to the rate of about one a year I was getting uh, out of the ones I was after. So to get three in uh, in one month is brilliant. So just six to go. And certainly one of those is, is pretty easy to get. So really it's only five, which seems incredible. with this copy of Dr. Now it's really really nice condition and the uh, the red of the spine is not faded at all so these bond ones haven't been in the sun which is good to good to see so 
They seem to be eating the Mr. Sheen there. Last little handful. So yeah, so I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Obviously, if you've not subscribed to the channel, then I ask the question, why not? So please, please, I'm racing, racing towards 20,000. It would be nice to think I could get there before the end of the year. Um, I think that might be a little bit ambitious, but not impossible. So if you'd like to see me get to 20,000 and you're on the fence about subscribing, well, do old Jules a bit of a favour and hit that subscribe button. Because 20,000 is definitely a bit of a milestone. But do I, do I celebrate 20,000 or do I wait till I get to 25? I don't know. I think I'll probably celebrate 20,000. <laughs> because it is quite a nice little... Uh, little milestone and I'm also coming up to if you can believe it 4 million views on the channel how crazy is that anyway thank you very much for watching today and uh, for your continued support if you've made it to the end well done I've got no special medal for you except to say thank you as we clean the last book Goldfinger Oh, what a good one to end on. <laughs> so yeah, I shall see you again very soon with another video. And I hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll see you soon. Bye.